Hello and welcome to another episode of the Transportation Exchange Podcast presented by Rush Truck Sales of Canada. I'm your host, Jason Cuddy. On today's episode, we're excited to welcome Joseph Dutton, Apprentice Service Technician from Rush Truck Sales of Canada. Joseph, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for, so much for having me, man. So we're excited to have you on um, and you know, excited to actually have you as, as part of the, the business as well. But I thought we'd dive in a little bit to understanding kind of who you are and, and how you got involved and interested in, in the role you're doing today currently. So when I was in about uh, grade eight, I uh, decided that I wanted a go-kart. Um, but being that I couldn't buy one, I decided to try and build one, which uh, led me into fixing small engines. So I picked up lawnmowers and snowblowers off the street and would fix them and then sell them, um, which led me to wanting to take uh, automotive when it came time for high school. And so I thought that my, the plan was to go be an automotive tech, and that was going to be my goal. And then when it came time for a um, co-op, I wanted to go to an automotive shop, but my teacher convinced me to go into a uh, truck and coach because he had worked here and he's like, great place to work. You'll do awesome. I'll get you a co-op. So I came here, did my co-op, loved it. When it came time to go to school again, I said I want to do truck and coach for my dual credit program. So that's where you go to Cambrian College. You get a high school credit and a Cambrian credit, and they they get you that Cambrian experience while still getting high school credits. And then you do another co-op at a shop. So I went to Rush again. Um, and then after that, it uh, just turned into a full apprenticeship. Nice. And so the, the interest of the apprenticeship is to build on kind of your interest and, and kind of make it a career instead of just an interest at that point. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Exactly. So for so for those who are looking into it, you know, maybe walk us through. So you you've left you know school. Now you're into the apprenticeship program. What's you know what's the day in the life of an apprentice? Kind of from where you started to where you are today. Uh, right when you start, they put you on services. Um, so you just changing fluids and inspecting vehicles. Um, but as you get more experience, more knowledge, they let you do bigger stuff. You know, you get a mechanical or um, brake job changing parts, things like that. They keep you pretty small. Um, but as you get going, you get bigger stuff. You get diag and um, service calls, things like that. Um, so it all depends where you are in your apprenticeship. For level one, mostly services. Level two, you'll get more bigger work, maybe even into transmissions. And then level three, you're doing almost everything. Right on. And then from a time frame point of view, the, the apprentice program traditionally, what's the uh, time frame from start to finish? About three or four years. You can get your, um, you can get a, each level done in about a year, um, depending on how many hours you get. Um, I forget how many hours it is total, but you can get about almost all of them in four years, especially if you um, get your uh, your test done first try. Gotcha. Um, so yeah, it's about four years. Excellent. And then despite it being practical, there is still some classroom component, I understand. Is that correct? Yes, definitely. So the classroom stuff for me, the dual credit started in high school. So I got out of high school with my level one, which was a really great, that's why that program so great is that you get your level one right out of high school. Um, but then every time you go to school, you take, you can either do it eight weeks and you leave work and you can work part-time sometimes. Most people just take the eight weeks off and they'll go, um, they'll go to class for every day for the week. Um, but you can also do it in a uh, little chunks. So you can do uh, every like Friday, you'll go just to class. And that takes, that takes a lot longer. I think it's, I think it's like three months or something like that. It's much longer. Gotcha. So you can break it up. So you're not really, I guess you can make it work for yourself and your schedule and kind of what you're trying to make happen in your day to day life as well. Yeah. It depends on how you want to work. Excellent. So having, you know, having gone into it and, you know, obviously you had the mechanic part of it but definitely a different industry of the, of where you thought you'd go. What, uh, what's your thoughts so far on, on the program as, as you've gone through it? So far, I love it. It's, it's lots of fun. I like, I definitely like working on uh, trucks much better to working on cars because I've done some of my own stuff and I found it's not as, not as fun. Um, the bigger stuff's a lot easier to work on, less cramped. Um, but it has, it has its ups and downs, right? Um, the bigger stuff is a lot heavier. Um, we're not at the point where you're using cranes for everything but it's so it can be a little harder on the body, but it's a little easier because you're not shoving yourself in cramped places. Some of these trucks are um, the company owned trucks. So it's not like one guy drives them. So if you, like if you get in a customer's car and you adjust their seat, some people flip out over that. <laughs> True. Since a ton of guys drive the trucks, everybody's getting in, they adjust the mirrors, they adjust the seats. 
So it's not big deals like that. So it's yeah. those little things that are a little nicer. Well, that's a good point. Like you think, you know, you take your car, say to your dealership or to your mechanic, it's, it's your own personal vehicle. And obviously there are personal trucks, you know, owner operators yes. and that, but it is a different, even experience from your end working on say company owned vehicles versus a personal vehicle. Like something you don't think of, you know, when you're in school, uh, you know, looking to go forward, but obviously it, just the interaction and, and probably just the, the workflow is a little bit different for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's much, it's much different. The fact that like a lot of guys be like, this is my truck. <laughs> just make you go back on the road. I don't care what you do to the seats or nothing like that. Just make it. Work. Yeah. yeah. Just get to work. Well, that's an interesting point. You said about the size too, because yes, I mean, they're big vehicles as we know, but I, I think, you know, industry wise, everyone always defaults back to the mechanic, the car, because it's where you, where you touch and, and see most of the time. And, you know, as you know, our industry, you know, not only just drivers, but also, you know, technicians, we need to, you know, backfill and, 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 the, and get more people involved. So highlighting the perks of, you know, Hey, this is pretty cool because, you know, yes, equipment's heavier, but you got a bit more room to work in like today's cars. You can, you can barely get a finger in there, let alone, you know, <laughs> equipment. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's much, it's much easier in that sense. Um, there's still some cr- cramped places, but there's, a, it's a lot better. Um, especially with, um, modern cars, the engines are mounted sideways right. and so are the transmissions. So that's to remove a transmission. You got to take the whole motor out with, modern trucks that's not a problem yeah and and i think the other part we see too technology wise i mean it's growing leaps and bounds obviously in the cars but just in the trucks and you know uh you know, the generation or two before you getting involved is definitely a lot more mechanical you're definitely seeing a lot more technology software diagnostics computer-based stuff and you know as we move forward you know we've got electric vehicles coming that are basically there's almost nothing mechanical on it you know kind of thing so yeah. you, you're seeing that switch and you, you think that brings a bit more interest to the younger generation to get in potentially? It could be if that's your thing. And that's, that's part of um, learning as an apprentice is learning that computer stuff. You can get a good grasp on turning a wrench. That's the easy part, but learning that computer stuff is an important part. Um, and, if, and if you like that, that's, you can go in and you can just work on dealing with the computers all day. We have guys that they do the diag and that's, that's their thing. They sit there with a the laptop, figure it out and they hand the, Whatever the problem is, they hand it over to somebody else. Yeah. No, if that's your thing, that works out perfectly. Yeah, for sure. And we need it, right? Because it's it's more and more of that. And gone are days, guys yeah. can come in quickly, change, touch a few things in the engine and get the guy on his way until he can book him into the shop properly. It's You're down a couple hours at least just to plug in the computer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. Shame. so, you know, career-wise, you're young, you're getting into it. Uh, you're, you're liking it, obviously. What, you know, as, as you learn more about it and getting, you know, getting involved, where, where do you see your, your career? What's, what do you ideally trying to plan out kind of going forward plan out i i would like to just see more is <laughs> you know i'm doing a lot of services and a lot of you know smaller just repairs i'd like to get into bigger more you know i think um i like to do transmissions shortly short term like you know in a year or so i'd like to do transmissions that's kind of my next step um but then eventually get into engines and all those things um just move up as high as I can is my goal. I'd like to get licensed in three years or so. Right. Um, and that's, that's the plan It's just learn as much as you can. Yeah. And there's still a lot to touch. Like you said, I mean, getting fully into the engines, you know, after treatment systems and then transmission, there's, there's a lot to dive, in, dive into, you know, and, yeah. as, and the technology is changing all around you as, as you're learning too. Yeah. And just, and going back to the computers thing, it's like, I know how to do a health report and, print off codes from Cummins. That's about as far as I know how to go on a computer, but I know there's a lot more. Yeah. And that's yeah. another thing I'd like to learn how to do is understand how to use those computers. Yeah, for sure. And you can do so much. Like I know, you know, we've, we've had, you know, Cummins or, you know, say Eaton or Allison come out to a customer site and customers complaining, it's not doing this or that. Or I'd like it to do, you know, a bit more power off the line or something like that and plug in the computer, you know, a few little clicks of the button and away you go truck is yeah. doing what you want to do. Like it's, it's kind of crazy. And we're almost to the point now where you can do over the air programming for some, some equipment. Right. So mm-hmm. it's, it's changing fast. I think you're catching it at the right time to kind of get involved and, you know, and have the, the technical knowledge to also accompany the uh, mechanical side of it as well. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So as you're, as you're looking to do the apprenticeship program, um, obviously the transition from, you know, car and vehicle, personal car and vehicles into, you know, into what we're doing now, what uh, what drove you towards uh, Rush as, as a potential you know employer to do this with? Well, like I said, my um, my teacher had worked here, and he said it was a great place to work. So I 
I decided to go. But what I like and what I've learned about this place and what I like about working here is that we do a little bit of everything. Is that you're not just doing engines. We're not just doing transmissions. We're not just services, mechanicals. We do everything. We do trailers, trucks. True. We'll do some buses, school buses. We don't do a lot of buses, but um, at least here. Uh, but that's that's the great thing is you get to learn what you like because we do everything. Yeah, and you're exposed to different product lines too, right? Like not just yes, you know, yeah. for most part. And obviously, being a shop, anything aftermarket and aftermarket parts, you can you can service anything that comes through the door for the most part. Exactly, that's the great part is you get to see other brands too. We don't just do international. You know, we get the Freightliners and Mac and a little bit of Kenworth, so we get to see a little bit of everything, which is awesome. So, you know, as anyone else looking to get into the industry, you know, your age, going, finishing high school, wrapping up, looking for a career, any additional advice you give them as far as considering this as, as a career path? Uh, biggest piece of advice would be um, just go and try. You got to figure out what you like. Um, even if you get it wrong the first time, that's, if you get into truck and coach and you decide you don't like truck and coach, that's okay. But you got to get out there and you got to try, you know, um, that's the big thing is just try it. You've got, especially if you're young, that's the time to make a wrong decision and not necessarily a wrong decision, but a, a, a learning decision. Yeah. It, it's, you gotta just try it. No, that's fair. I mean, you got time to, to, to change paths if it doesn't work. And if it does, you've started yourself off at a great age that you can build out off that. And, you know, I think you've seen in our company, you've got people running to shops, you know, running to branches that are fairly young age who have come up through the programs traditionally, you know, it, even our present CEO started off as a technician, right? So the sky's the limit and the more you learn and, and Carly, like you said, you throw yourself at it and see if you like it. And if you like it, you know, the opportunities are pretty, pretty big for you. Exactly. Yes. Excellent. Hey, well, look, we want to thank you for, for taking some time, sharing your story, sharing the apprenticeship program. It's, it's a cool program, you know, for people who want to learn more and how to get involved and get, get certified and, and get trained. Uh, but we do want to, you know, again, thank you for, for taking a few minutes to, to chat with us and, and share your story. Hey, no problem. Thanks so much for having me. Excellent. Well, that concludes today's episode. I want to thank Joseph from Rush Truck Centers of Canada for joining us. And to catch up on past episodes, check out transportationexchangepodcast.ca. Until next time, thanks for listening. <laughs>